Hello everyone, it's Mr. Rupser, and I'm going to do your first introduction to what we call matrices. And uh, you can take the time and read what the definition of a matrix is, or the matrix, which is always good fun. But here is a scenario about what we're given. Take a moment, we'll read it together. Volkswagen has four dealers in a city. The dealers sell compact cars, mid-size cars, and full-size cars. The average sales per week for dealer A, there's four dealerships, there's six, eight, and five full-size cars, and so on as given. Okay? And so in the first week, cars were sold in thousands of dollars at a price for 11 for compact, 18,000 for mid-size, 27 for full-size. following week, they changed the price to the following prices. Okay, and so now we have a bunch of scenarios to consider. So we have all our information. So now, we want to look at a part. Create a four by three matrix of dealers by car size and name it D. Well, okay, so D is going to be a four by three. Well, matrices are formed by rows by columns. And so rows go this way, rows and columns go this way. And I, you'll see me in class using my hands going horizontally and vertically to always get it straight in my mind. So I want to have four rows, so one, two, three, four, and three columns, two, three. And what I'm going to have here basically is this is going to be my matrix six, eight, and five, and ten, three, and seven, and for dealer C it will be four, five, nine, and twelve, zero, and two. So here is my matrix. I can have square brackets, I can have round brackets, it doesn't really matter. And this is really referring to dealer A, B, C, and D. And we have our compact, our midsize, and our full cars. And so it's just a way, make an array of information in an orderly way. Okay? So what is the value of D2, 1? Well, D2, 1 is rows by column, always rows by columns. And I had a really hard time remembering this when I was a student. But when I was a student, there was this thing called, well, we know we have Coca-Cola, but we had an RC Cola, which wasn't very good, but I remembered RC Cola was how I could go rows by columns to remember it. Whatever works, and I still remember that. And that's my mnemonic device for, I still use it today. So D21, so that means row two, row two, column one, this value here, well, that's D21. And that means specifically that dealer B sells 10 compact cars in a week on average. Okay, then C part says create a 3 by 2 matrix of the car size by price named P. Okay, well P, I'm going to put P over here. I want a 3 by 2. So again, I'm going to have 3. One, two, three by two. So three here. And so I'm going to have, if I have this information here, well, I know it's 11 compact, 18, and 27. And this is the price for week number one. And then for week two, I have 13, 19, and 30. And so it's just a matter of paying attention to ordering, putting these in the right position. Okay, so that is P, our price matrix. Our dealer matrix, our price matrix. Now it says determine DP. DP means I'm going to multiply these two matrices. And if I'm going to multiply these two, two matrices, we have to learn how to multiply. Okay, and so when I'm going to multiply, a couple things I'm going to mention to you is I know from up here that this is a 4 by 3 and this is a 3 by 2. If these two numbers are the same, then I can multiply. Then and only then can I multiply. And my resulting matrix will end up being a 4 by 2 matrix. So I know when I'm done here, I'm going to have a 4 by 2 matrix to look at. Okay, so the way I do it is I'm going to look at my first 
row here and my first column. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a lot of multiplying and adding. I'm going to multiply these values here and then I'm going to add it to the multiplication of these two values and then I'm going to add it to the multiplication of these two values. And so when I do that, dp will be 6 times 11, which is 66, plus 8 times 18, times 18, which is 144, plus, and then I go 5 times the 27, which is 135. And I add all those values up. When the numbers are smaller, I can do it quite easily. Okay, and so there's the first one. Then I move on to this position here, and I'm, it's going to be, I'm going to, I'll do the calculations later. So now I'm going to move over to this one here. And so I'm going to move the green circle over, the red over, and the purple and the black over. And so now it's 6 times 13 plus 8 times 19 plus 5 times 13. And that's going to go in this position here. So it's going to be the 6 times 13 plus the 8 times 19 plus the 5 times 30. And it's when these numbers are big, it's pretty messy to work with, but we have no choice. If I want to go to the second first column, second row. Well, when I look at these, these are my columns, so I have to be in the first column. If I want the first column, here's my first column, and if I want the second position, then I must change to the second row. And these ones go here as well. And so when I multiply, then it's going to be 10 times 11, plus the 3 times 18, plus the 7 times 27, and so on and so forth. And there's, when we have big numbers, it's harder to do, but when I go on to the next column, if I go to here, moving it over to this one, this will be second row, second column, so this position. And again, it's going to be, we'll go, 10 times 13 plus 3 times 19 plus 7 times 19 and so on and so forth. This could get really tedious and big numbers and we always have our calculator so I'm going to switch over to our calculator and when I do that let's make sure we can see our matrix. There's a key here called matrix I'm going to go to second matrix and I'm going to edit a. So I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to do A. And I want it to be a rows, four rows by three columns. I'm going to go four rows by three columns. And now it's just a matter of entering the data in. Six, oh, six, eight. Oh, why didn't that work? So six, eight, five. 10, 3, 7, 4, 5, 9, and 12, 0, and 2. And so now I have that entered. That's good. If I also look now at my matrix B, I've already taken the liberty. Oh, go to matrix B, which is... I've already taken liberty and entered in P here. All the values are here. And so now I just want to multiply the two. So if I go second matrix A times matrix B, I will get my full matrix. And so here is what my full matrix is going to be. I'll just steal the screen here. And we can see quite clearly what our values are going to be. So it works out to 34 uh, as such. And what does this matrix mean? Well, 
I know that this is multiplying the dealer. So this is dealer A, B, C, and D. And this is the amount of money in thousands that dealer A made in the first week. This is the amount of money the dealer A made in the second week on average. And dealer B and so on and so forth. And so from here we can see that it looks like dealer B brings in the most amount of money. So there is your introduction to matrices. It does a lot of taking information, putting it into an array of numbers, and then we can actually do operations with it and it has meaning at the end.